Let us read the Bible in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Therefore the Lord God sent him out from the Garden of Eden to work the ground for which he was taken. He drove out the men, and at the east of the Garden of Eden he placed a cherubim and a flaming sword that turned away to guard the way to the tree of life. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, please bless each pastors and chaplains as we are ministering to others in needs in this special time in which we are serving. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Welcome to Emotional Health Solutions Seminar. Always from the beginning of our existence, from the Garden of Eden, we notice the pain and sorrow that being cast out of the garden has caused to human beings. Pastors and chaplains are also human beings. Although we, we like nowadays heroes and icons, we the pastors, we the servant, we the chaplains are also human beings subject to needs, wants, pains, sorrow, mistakes, sin. I have been asked to talk to chaplains and pastors about self-care, pastoral self-care, especially the correctional chaplain. I am a correctional chaplain. I work in a complex with a maximum security level, a medium security level, a female level, or a female prison, as you said, and a camp. And if there is a place in this world in which we are serving today that Jesus is needed, this is the prison. I have been ministering in, basically I can say in every setting of uh, ministry, but I learned so many tools and, 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 and informations and I always thought that I am learning, that I know that I am good to serve. But the most humbling experience in my ministry has been to serve in the prison setting. It is there that the robber really meet the road. And so I have been working in these seminars, not only uh, for pastors, not only for uh, people in need, but also for um, we to learn how to minister to those in need. Not only to give you tools to know how to do your ministry, but also to prepare yourself for you to be taking care of yourself, to be wholeness, to be, to be healthy, so that you can serve a better capacity to those in need. And therefore, the God uh, Almighty has given me this idea of working in Emotional Health Solutions Seminary because I am convinced that emotional wounds hurt even more than physical wounds. After being serving with uh, soldiers, in Iraq in 2005, I have the tremendous opportunity to become a hospital chaplain. And in 2007, just two years after being serving with the soldiers in Iraq, where so many got wounded and some uh, got killed, then I was assigned to Walter Reed Army Medical Center, where God gave me these ideas as I am ministering to, to the wounded soldiers, wounded warriors, that 
emotional wounds hurt even more than physical wounds. But what to do with this tremendous pain that people are suffering, not only amputees, not only veterans with PTSD and TBI, traumatic brain injury and post-traumatic disorder, but also those in need, those hurting individual, those people in sorrow and pain from the situations of this life. How many of us are really suffering today? How many of us are really in pain today because of so many things, situations, and circumstances? Once I heard a pastor say, the first things I did when I was born was that I cry, and every day reminds me why. Brothers and sisters, pastors and chaplains, as you are ministering to those in pain, like the clinical pastoral education teach us, what are those wounds that you are bringing to the table? In what capacity can you serve others when your wounds are bleeding? I am recommending pastoral self-care for you to be more effective in order for you to fulfill what the laws require of us, which is to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before our God. But how to do this? How to be wholeness? How to be healthy? How to be happy? How to be fulfill it, how to be entirely sane, how to be happy to serve others, how to have the proper tools to serve those in need. In this seminar, I am proposing a very simple ingredient. The most simple ingredients of us, of all, given to us by Jesus himself in his sacred words, the Bible. And it is found in Matthew 22, chapter 37 to 40. You shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all all your heart, with all your soul, and your neighbor as yourself. But again, the questions remain in the table. How can we do this in the midst of this chaotic situation and circumstances and era in which we are serving today? Look at the pandemics. Look at the suffering around looks at the coronavirus as, as it is uh, taking so many lives and, and making so many people to worry and, and, and basically is taking our freedom and our joy away from our heart. Brothers and sisters, in the midst of all of these situations, circumstances in which you might be passing through or those that you are serving are passing through, we must be serving the Lord with all our mind, with all our hearts, with all our soul. How to do this? I am proposing to you this ingredient, which is simply healthy self-love. Healthy self-love is these tools that might help us to deal with emotional wounds. When I was about to read Army Medical Center, and I was conducting this research, this is what one by one amputees, double amputees, even triple amputees, this is what they all told me, that emotional wounds hurt even more than physical wounds. And I am proposing, I repeat, that healthy self-love and self-awareness is the best tool you can have 
to serve those in need. How to do this? First, you have to come and hear the voice. The Emotional Health Solutions Seminar is the theory. Come and see the emotional radar, a tools that we are given to synchronize our feelings, our needs in the midst of our pains and sorrow. And that will be a practical way to balance our life today. Also, come and feel the healing power of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is trying to encompass our meaningful ministry as we are touching those in need. Healthy self-love is this main ingredient given to people by God himself in order to serve those in need. We are representing 24-7 Link Community, a community service that God has given to this servant to glorify God, to, to give you tools to prepare to serve in a better capacity. So the objective of these presentations are to glorify God in spite of our emotional wounds, to identify emotional wounds, to develop healthier relationship, to review basics of wellness and resilience, to implement self-care and techniques. Too many of us are hurting. We have to do our part in developing a better community. We have to keep the right perspective. Emotional health is an important ingredient of overall health to fulfill the two greatest commitments given to us. We must first be emotionally healthy. Then we can create and promote healthier families because it is in the family system the best way to protect those in need, those vulnerable, especially our children. Because we have a loving Father, a healer, heavenly Father, we all must treat self and others as such. So come with me and embrace this theory of emotional health in order for us to be more effective in our ministry. To fulfill those two greater commitments, we must deal first with the following. Emotional health is part of an integral um, wholeness and holistic well-being. In our um, endeavor, in our organizations, we are dealing with this phenomenon that is always occupying our minds and heart, which is pain and sorrow. So what is emotional wounds? What caused it? Which or what effect today's society? What kind of problem prevent us from being emotionally healthy? Do we have a real solution for the problems of pain, suffering, and sorrow nowadays? 24-7 Link Community is a, a, a three-part front that is trying to equip and train pastors and chaplains to be more effective in whatever given arena you are placed to serve our mighty Lord. This 
uh, lean community organization is a moral faith-based community center and school that is intending to serve veterans and their family with a very strong emphasis in their spouses to protect the children. The second pillar of this organization is called Chapel Way, in which we are training and equipping pastors in their denominations or in their churches, turning these churches into, the churches into uh, um, a practical training institute to prepare the church not only to evangelize, but, but beyond evangelism is the other part that Jesus was doing during his life and ministry in this earth, which was healings, the soul of those in need. As I have been serving as a chaplain since 2004, first in the military, at peace and at wartime, uh, locally and deployed to Iraq, and then I became a hospital chaplain, an army hospital chaplain, and after that then I became a chaplain for the army prison, and now I am serving in the Federal Bureau of Prison, then I think I have a voice to share. I think I have something that can serve and benefit uh, those. And one thing I have noticed, every place I go, many places I have been, is this. Number one, veterans do not speak about their personal problems with others that are not veterans. Number two, there are not so many effective programs, especially in the churches, suitable to help to guide the veterans and their family. This is one of the reasons why so many veterans end up in prison, because the lack of resources that help them to be part of the community. Therefore, many veterans and their families and their children are isolated. Not to count that because of the war, because of the uh, being away and separated for so long time, it is very common, the, the, the rate is higher in the veterans to be separated or divorced. And what happened to those children? You see it yourself. As a, hosp as a prison chaplain, I can tell you that many veterans end up in prison because of the lack of resources. And many children of these veterans end up in prison because what was the role models that I, they have been exposed? So as I am going through uh, uh, churches and places, I am trying to convince the pastors to be equipped, to be trained, to be mindful of the needs of proper training in order to be more effective to avoid imprisonment, to avoid, to, to protect these children from, from ending up in prison. And I am speaking from the experience. Right here with me in the room is my 21, 20, 20 years old son, which five years ago, when I was, when I started my ministry in the prison, man, I was scared to death. The first things that I, that I did was to call his mother and tell her how worried, how scared I was because of the things that I am learning in the prison. What is going on? What is happening to, 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 to society today? And I start praying like crazy. I start bothering all my friends and, and prayers group, and I start bugging my, 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 my children uh, because what was happening to them because our separations, 
I am divorced. I was divorced from their mother. I am remarried now. Uh, but my children suffer the consequences of divorces as I am ministering. So I am not speaking here just theory. I am speaking to you from the heart. I was in pain and sorrow. I was suffering tremendously, not only the loneliness, as I am ministering to this uh, uh, inmate, I am suffering from my own pain of seeing my children passing from childhood to adolescent teenagers time. And I can tell you, my son is here right, right now with me. I invited him to hear this presentation, to make it meaningful to you. Because the way I saw him, he was going straight to jail. The way his anger, his problem, his suffering was, was carrying him, he was going straight forward to prison. And it hurts me. It hurts me deeply to see that inevitable, if my son continued that path that he was going on, he was going straight to jail. So this is reason number one why I am doing this. I am pleading with you pastors. I am charging you chaplains, be healthy. Be emotionally healthy. Be trained. Be equipped. Be prepared in order for you to be relevant in today's society. Yes, preaching the gospel is very important. Yes, we must preach the gospel. Yes, we have to evangelize. But remember, evangelism first starts with oneself. Evangelism first starts in your household. The best, I assume that you are agree with me, the best things that can happen to you as a pastor, as a chaplain, is to have healthy children. So I am praying for you. Please pray for me and my, and my, and my children. And I will pray for your children and I will ask my children. As a matter of fact, they are helping me to develop this program um, to make it more meaningful. So later on, you might see our books, you might see our calendar, you might see even our movies that we are uh, uh, thinking, we are preparing, we are working to have a movie in which we're going to put all of this in practice to help others to be more efficient. So. Pillar number three of our organization is a seminar like this, but in the retreat setting. It will be a healthier family retreat, a place and time to recover, to rest and recuperate. Our focus in our family system is to create an agency where we train and equip caregivers from every place and, and, and career and to equip them to unify. This program, as I am trying to do in these presentations, is a fusion of psychology and theology as they marry together to deal with the personhood, to create awareness and wholeness through a holistic approach for a complete peace of mind and, and healthy self-being. In that way, not only we will be personally benefit, but we will together benefit the community, the society at large. Not to mention, of course, our church and our family. So in this uh, 24-7 Lean Community Organizations, we are creating a battle body system. We, the military, the veterans, understand very well this dynamic. Let me explain to you. 
what is going on after the separations, even from the beginning of time, loneliness and separations created this illusion of, of self-sufficiency that propel us into um, more pain and sorrow as we are created to be a society, to live in a community. We are trying to help and train and guide pastors and caregivers, particularly chaplains, into these organizations for better resort, to deliver a system where love can be the driving force. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, with all your heart, with all yourself, and love your neighbor as yourself. If we love each other, if we love God, if we love ourselves, if we love others, then we will have a better society, a better community, a better resort. Now, how to put life in the right perspective? In the Bible, we are warned to be taking care of ourselves. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible said, Submit yourself then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. One day, a horse was tied up. A demon came and untied the horse. The horse went to a neighbor farm and ate the crop. The farmer took his rifle and killed the horse. The horse owner took his rifle and kill the farmer, the farm owner. The farmer wife took her rifle and kill the horse owner. The horse owner son took his rifle and kill the farmer wife. The enraged neighbors took their firearms and killed the horse owner's son. And also burned the little house and the little property they have. A demon was asked, why did you do all of that? And the demon responds, I didn't do much. I just untie the horse. So, brothers and sisters, many times the devil do little things knowing that we are responsible of the rest. Therefore, it is not good that we take actions without thinking first in the middle of the struggle, in the middle of the pain, in the middle of the sorrow, uh, whatever situation, circumstances, circumstances or conditions you are in. No matter what is throwing at you, you have to be wholeness. You have to be emotionally healthy in order for you to be spiritually fit. If I am making sense, think with me the importance about the importance of being emotionally health. It is an overall part of holistic health. An emotionally healthy person is in control of oneself or himself, no matter what he is uh, 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 um, uh, put on. Once I heard these beautiful illustrations. A presenter has an orange. Imagine that I have an orange in my hand and I am squishing the orange. What is coming out of the orange? That orange juice, you say. Am I right or right? But what about 
if you are that orange in the hands of the devil and he is squishing hard, what comes out of you? One day, I learned a big lesson. As I was arguing with a lady. And I was arguing of something, a nonsense, that I thought I was right, but I was completely wrong. And so as I was being out of line, out of touch with this respectful woman, boy, he, she showed me a lesson of life. She said this, in moments like this is that you really know who you really are. That hit me like one ton of bricks in, in my heart and all what I did was to collapse at her feet in tears and pleading her to forgive me because I repented from my wrongdoing. In moment under pressure is that you really know who you really are. So be emotionally healthy so that you can be emotionally, spiritually fit and more uh, effective in your ministry. Wellness is a very important part of holistic wholeness in order for you to fulfill this task. What is wellness? Wellness is a complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of diseases or firmly said the World Health Organizations. Wellness and resilience are as imperative to be wholeness in this society that we are living today. Emotionally Health Solutions Seminar is a tool that can help you to achieve this noble endeavor, for lack of better terminology, that we must be embraced. So in these couple of minutes left, let me try to, to, to invite you to join with me in this journey of realistic life. I simply put it like this. Everything starts in our life from the book of Genesis in the very beginning. But I like to go a little bit beyond. I said that we were conceived, at least the plan of creation of human being, you and me, were created or developed in heaven, in the eternity of heaven. And so when God said, let us create men in our image and likeness, then men were placed in the Garden of Eden to fulfill that idea, to fulfill that goal of being created into, our, uh, into God's image and likeness. But because of the disobedience, then the separations. And because of the separations, then the journey, the journey of life, the journey where Adam and Eve were taken out like Satan himself was cast out from heaven, now Adam and Eve, for listening to Satan, now also have to be cast out from the Garden of Eden. And now they are going into a journey, Janiel, and then they are creating us. In that journey of pain, suffering, and sorrow, and problems, and, and, and all kinds of things of this life, you and I came to be. And that is what I start my seminar today. The first things I did when I was born is that I cry and every day reminds me why. So how can we in this journey of bumps and ups and down and turn and failing and hurting and wounds and everything we have to strive to look up and experience God's healing touch because Jesus is always with us. So 
Think with me for a moment. What is life? What is your life, pastor? Where you come from? Why did you choose to be a chaplain? One of the things that it is work very hard for chaplains that do clinical pastor education, CPE, is to confront themselves with their past, their pain, their sorrow, their problems, their presuppositions, their biases, and all what you are bringing from the past. So you have to be aware of your own baggages in order for you to be free and experience God healing touch and to be effective in the community that you are serving. So let us define life for a moment. Think about what life is. What is your life? There are three major elements of life that help us to achieve this goal. What is your definition of life? I put it very simple for you. Life is to learn to live and to know how to live. This is simply. Life is about two things and two things only. Change and decisions. Change and decisions. Now, change will not come automatically. Change has to be driving or driven by your own attitude. You have to decide to change for better. And if you don't make the decision to change, automatically something or somebody else will decide where you go, where you're going to be, what you're going to feel, what you're going to see, what you're going to hear. So have the courage to change and embrace the power from Jesus to change because God wants us to change. The five, the, 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 the other element, which is decisions, there are five decisions in life that determine your happiness, your completeness, or your suffering, or your um, uh, succumb to the, the, the problem of this life. Five, two of them has nothing to do with you, but they are decisions. First is to be born. Somebody decide to make you, to create you. Right or wrong, right or wrong, <laughs> they created you. Um, and so dying is also a decision, but it's not up to you. Therefore, there is three um, questions that you have to answer in order for your life to be fulfilled. This is faith or beliefs, career or professions, and partner or spouse. If you think a little bit like my cameraman here, know very well the triple where the camera stand, the camera is your life and the triple is each legs of those three elements of life, faith, career, and partner. The existential quest of life is who I am, who I want to be. There is an internal conflict in many people between those two arenas, between who you are and who you want to be. And this, my chaplain, is what brings many of your parishioners, whether inmates, soldiers, or civilians, this is what makes the people to be who they are because of the things of this life, the things that they've been through, the things that have been thrown at them. So may the Lord bless you, may the Lord guide you, may the Lord em 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 empower you to be wholeness. God bless you all. Thank you.